Hello friends, here in this video we are going to see reversible temperature process also called as isothermal process in detail. Let us get started. Now reversible constant temperature process or isothermal process can be understood with the help of a diagram. The diagram is Now, the isothermal process can be understood in this way that suppose there is a piston kept over a gas which is trying to expand. Now, as we know, when the gases are expanding, their temperature will drop. So, to maintain a constant temperature, here I am having or I am drawing a heat source. This heat source will continuously supply high temperature to the gas. It means when the gases are expanding, the temperature reduces, piston will try to move up. At that same instant, the heat source will provide high temperature and increase the temperature of gas to the initial volume. So because of such an arrangement, the temperature will remain constant during the expansion process. So this process is reversible constant temperature expansion process. Similarly, we can have a compression process in which the piston will be moving down that is the gases are going to be compressed and when the gases are compressed their pressure will rise and even their temperature will increase. So in that case we should have a heat sink which will take the high amount of heat which is generated during the compression and try to make the temperature constant. So here I have assumed a reversible constant temperature expansion process. Next, I'll show this process on PV diagram. This curve is governed by the law PV is equal to constant which is nothing but isothermal process. And now as we can see here, pressure at point 1 is high which is P1 and the volume is V1, volume is low. Next. After the expansion has taken place, the pressure drops from P1 to P2 and the volume increases from V1 to V2. So whatever area I am getting under this curve, that area is nothing but the amount of work output which we are getting from this system. That is the gases when they expand, they move the piston and we get the amount of work transfer or we can say work done. So area under this curve 1 to 2 gives the work done which is the shaded area which I am going to mark here. So this shaded area gives the amount of work done or work which we are getting from the system. Now suppose if it would have been compression process then we would have started it from point 1 here and point 2 in this location and the direction of arrow would have been reversed because in compression the volume it decreases 
with the increase of pressure but in case of expansion process the volume increases with decrease in pressure so this is the isothermal process on pv diagram next i'll start explaining the steps here at first the relation pressure volume and temperature relation since for state 1 i can write down p1 v1 upon t1 for state 2 p2 v2 upon t2 and that is equal to constant c next as the process is having constant temperature so t1 and t2 are same i can cancel them so finally the relation which we are getting here is p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 and here i'll write down since the temperature t1 is equal to t2 because it is isothermal or constant temperature process next i'll write the step for amount of work done so work done during isothermal process and here the process is isothermal expansion process so the amount of work done first i'll write it in the form of general equation that is work done is equal to it is given by integral pdv and it was from state 1 to 2 now here i can say that i'll explain it on the side that since pv is equal to mrt this is the characteristic gas equation which we can use for any state now therefore if p is here if i send mass into the denominator of volume this volume upon mass that is what the unit of volume is meter cube divided by mass which is kg so meter cube per kg is called as specific specific volume so therefore p into specific volume is denoted by small v that is equal to rt and this value is constant for state 1 similarly this would be constant for state 2 so here therefore i'll use the relation that next p is equal to since pv is equal to c so p will be equal to c upon specific volume that's a relation i am going to use here so here i'll be replacing pressure p with c upon v so therefore the work done will become integration c upon v dv i am integrating with respect to volume so the limits will be volume v1 to v2 because the process is starting from 1 to 2 now i am integrating this term c will be constant since it is a constant term i'll take it outside integration of dv by v from v1 to v2 now this will give me the value as ln of v because integration of 1 upon v is log to the base e which can be written as ln ln so this will be equal to therefore work done is equal to c into ln of v and here i am going to put the limits which is from v1 to v2 that is initial volume up to final volume so therefore work done will be equal to c into ln of v2 minus ln of v1 log to the base e can be written as ln which is ln so therefore 
work done will be equal to c into ln of it can be written as v2 by v1 since here we are having negative sign next therefore work done can also be written as this constant c it is equal to pressure into volume so i can write the relation for state 1 that is it will be replacing c with p1 v1 next same can be written for state 2 replacing c with p2 v2 so here the formula will become p1 v1 ln of v2 by v1 and this is also equal to p2 v2 that is if i write for state 2 ln of v2 by v1 so this is the formula of work done and i can say that also since p1 v1 is equal to mr t1 and p2 v2 is equal to mr t2 that is from the characteristic gas equation so here in this formula p1 v1 can be replaced that is work done will become mr t1 ln of v2 by v1 is equal to mr t2 ln of v2 by v1 so this is another formula of work done for isothermal process next since at first we had written the relation p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so i can utilize this as well that is since p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so if i want v2 by v1 v2 upon v1 can be said equal to p1 by p2 it means in the same formula we can replace v2 by v1 with p1 by p2 that is for isothermal process now after getting the amount of work done next is change in internal energy so change in internal energy for isothermal process it will be given by delta u is equal to general formula mcv t2 minus t1 and therefore i can directly write down the change in internal energy is equal to 0 the reason being since it is isothermal process so therefore the temperature t1 is equal to the temperature t2 so there is no change in temperature and if there is no change in temperature there is no change in internal energy it means the meaning of this term is whatever the amount of heat which we are giving into the system that heat is completely converted into work without increasing the amount of internal energy because in case of constant temperature process the change in internal energy is zero so next i'll write down therefore heat transfer is given by it is also denoted by the general formula q is equal to work done plus change in internal energy now therefore q will be directly equal to the amount of work done and this is written because the change in internal energy is zero for isothermal process since delta u is equal to zero so whatever amount of work done which we have written previously that will be equal to the amount of heat transfer so here i can show that whatever the previous formula of work done which we have written p1 v1 ln of v2 by v1 p2 v2 ln of v2 by v2 that same will be the amount of heat transfer so the amount of heat transfer is equal to amount of work done in case of isothermal process so in this video we have seen isothermal process in detail